Welcome to module two. My name is Nixon Karithi, and I'm your instructor for this course for journalists on how journalists could improve uh, the work of the African uh, Free Trade Agreement. Module number two, reporting African economic indicators. Here are some of the major economic indicators and concepts for you to remember as you report trade and development in Africa. Classical economics. Now, classical economics is a school of economic thought. It is exemplified by Adam Smith's writings in the 18th century, and it states that, uh, that a change in supply will eventually be marched by a change in demand, so that the economy is always moving towards an equilibrium. This, this theory was overtaken first by the classical, by the neoclassical economics of the early 20th century, and then again by the Keynesian thought of the 1920s and 1930s. Uh, the reemergence in the late 20th century of policies, in, including efforts towards free trade, was backed to some extent by principles related to classical economics. Macroeconomic policy. Broad government policies uh, try to ensure that there is economic stability in a country. Such policies include monetary and fiscal policy, as well as government priorities in allocating resources. Monetary policy is used to determine how uh, the Reserve Bank or the Central Bank influences the supply and demand is a policy determined by the Reserve Bank or the Central Bank to influence the supply and demand for money in the economy. There are numerous approaches for setting goals and defining uh, instruments for monetary policy. At various times, policy has targeted the growth of monetary aggregates and interest rates, exchange rates, and also the inflation rate. Fiscal policy is the policy on tax spending and borrowing by the government of a particular country. Gross domestic product is the total value of an economy's total output of goods and services. One of, it is also one of the key indicators of economic growth. The other one is gross national product, which is the same as gross domestic product or GDP, except that it adds what a country earns from overseas investments and subtracts what the foreigners in that particular country send back to their home country. Nominal GDP or nominal GNP is calculated at market prices. For a more accurate indication of economic growth or the impact of inflation and deflation can be removed to produce inflation adjusted GDP or real GDP. It's also called GDP or GNP at constant prices. This is done by applying a price deflator to nominal GDP or GNP. The deflator reflects changes in the prices of all goods and services uh, that are being, uh, for the year, under review. Uh, inflation indicators such as the price consumer index or CPI look at a basket of goods. Nominal GDP and GNP are normally calculated at factor cost basis, which is at market prices, which are equivalent to the cost of the factors of production. But the value of output can also be calculated or estimated by looking at the national income and from the production of goods and services. Some countries monitor GNI, that's the gross national income, as a key indicator of economic growth. GDP per capita is a measure of the country's economic output considering its population size. And so it divides the country's GDP or gross domestic product by the total population. GDP per capita is widely used to measure standards of living, while GDP per capita is suitable for doing cross-country benchmarks of living standards and economic well-being, 
it is an unreliable measure of personal income. Closed economies are those economies that are protected from outside economic influence through laws that prohibit or inhibit foreign trade and capital movements. Uh, consumer prices are normally measured by using a consumer price index or CPI, which measures or which shows the change over time in the price of a fixed basket of goods and services that can be bought by a typical consumer. This is the main measure of inflation in an economy. And, and it is also uh, found, uh, the basket is also found by investigating typical goods and services that are, that are sold in public shops. Therefore, inflation is a general increase in prices, and it is normally expressed as an annual rate of growth in the consumer or retail price index. One can measure inflation in producer, in producer or consumer price or wholesale price terms. Unless matched by an increase in wages, inflation means a loss of purchasing power. It also reduces the value of a country's currency as more units of currency are needed over time to buy the same goods. In nominal terms, you, when you speak in nominal terms, you mean the actual monetary value in terms of the purchasing power of the day or at current prices. The devaluing effect of inflation on the real value of money has not yet been taken into account. Government's budgets do not adjust for inflation. Real terms is a term used to express the value that is measured in terms of the purchasing power of money at a particular time. For example, GDP measured at constant 2015 prices is that it would mean that you're taking the devaluing effect of inflation into account. Cost push, cost push inflation is inflation caused by rising prices that follow on the heels of rising costs. It's also called seller's inflation. And this is a term that recognizes that the economy may depart from stability. Depart, demand pool inflation refers to inflation uh, when the driving force behind changes in prices is stronger demands from consumers rather than an increase in the cost of producing goods. A current account uh, is seen as a part of balance of payments relating to imports and exports of goods and services. A current account deficit means that the sum of all these activities are negative. A current account surplus, on the other hand, means that the sum of all these activities is positive. Current deficit is a measure of the extent to which governments have to it is equal to the conventional budget deficit or surplus that is the difference between expenditure and revenue minus in investment expenditure and revenue uh, and capital revenues that is asset sales direct foreign investment this is new investment or acquisitions of existing assets by foreigners an example would be the exam the expansion of say the volkswagen group um, into its production of its production capacity in nigeria or in rwanda value added tax is a tax on the value that is added that is the difference between the cost of production and the selling price of most products. Certain products such as bread, milk, fresh vegetables are exempt from VAT in order to alleviate the tax burden on the poor. Here are some practical news gathering questions for you. What is the GDP of your country? What is the GDP growth rate? What factors are supporting or hindering your country's GDP growth rate? What economic sectors contribute the most to your country's GDP? And why is that the case?
What percentage of your country's GDP comes from manufacturing or from services? Why do you think this is important? And what does it signify? Look at neighboring countries and start thinking about what proportion of GDP is linked to trade for each one of them. Discover and write the differences in contribution to your country's GDP. Look further into the region and identify patterns of support to your GDP, maybe major exports and imports. Write about the growing importance of certain economic activities or infrastructure changes that support your region's GDP. Now, looking at your region's GDP growth patterns and trends, what challenges and weaknesses do you identify? Speak to some national or regional organizations, such as the business chamber, export clubs, and manufacturers associations for guidance on this assignment. What key questions would you ask a government official in your country or region regarding the challenges to GDP growth that you have identified in your research? What role do you think media organizations like yours play in assisting the region in solving economic growth challenges? Here is a way to think about gathering news on economic, um, economic development and GDP uh, for, for yourself on a daily basis. To answer the above questions, uh, build a simple database, maybe on a Word document or an Excel document, which you can update regularly and also email it to yourself from your computer so that it can be easily available. And now on this database, collect information on economic sectors, GDP growth patterns, and then also major statements or pronouncements by major organizations on the economic performance of your country or your region. Using this database that you have started, uh, continue generating simple stories on how certain sectors are doing better than others in your country and in the region. Find officials and specialists from major organizations that, who can explain some of these trends and patterns. Challenge yourself to get new stories and fresh angles each week. Give feedback to your editor or your supervisor on how this, this exercise is enriching your media practice. As you generate new story ideas, especially the ones on the region, look out for media practitioners around you in your region with whom you could share some of your experiences. In your interactions, look out for opportunities to collaborate. For example, see whether a media practitioner from another country could ask officials and specialists some questions on your behalf and then send you an MP3 file or send you some notes that you can use. Of course, when you write your story or when you publish your story, acknowledge your, co your colleague's contribution in any news report that you file. Here is an example on the use of economic data in news stories. This story is from Botswana. It's published in November 2019, and it is uh, the headline is Botswana Cuts 2019 Economic Growth Forecast. And so the story tries to explain what the government is saying about growth uh, for, for Botswana and uh, why is it being um, why is it being cut? Why do they foresee a decline in economic growth? You also then need to know something about Botswana, something about the nature of its economy the, and the main sectors. A second story is about Nigeria and the headline is market analysts assess Nigeria's oil and non-oil economic prospects story was published in November 2019 and uh, and it looks at how the impact of of uh, economic uh, growth and also population growth when you look at Nigeria and you look at whether the cost of living and whether people are getting better or things are getting worse uh, it's important you understand the context within which the story is written 
For Nigeria, crude oil is a major commodity, and that is why the writer starts by looking at um, at oil as well as non-oil uh, sectors of the Nigerian economy. Uh, this third example is from Tanzania, was written in November 2019. It looks at the contribution of mining and the telecoms uh, sectors to the Tanzanian economy. It also tries to say where does the where can you find news on the Tanzanian economy? So the Tanzanian the Tanzania National Bureau of Statistics releases data for your country. You can look which entity produces or releases regular economic data um, that where you can go and find. In this particular example, uh, it is also about the second quarter of 2019. This is very important because it tells you that data is released in quarters in Tanzania. And also it tells you that the economy of Tanzania is organized in primary, secondary, and tertiary levels. So this particular story now focuses on the tertiary, that's the third level, on the tertiary level of activities. And finally, this example, the fourth example, is again back to Nigeria. It looks at uh, the economic growth of Nigeria. It's a story that was written in November 2019, and it looks at uh, uh, three months to uh, end of September, which is the third quarter of 2019, and uh, what sectors contributed the most to Nigeria's growth. And here it identifies uh, crude oil as the one area that helped um, Nigeria grow. It's two things that are important even as you write is to look at what is the size of the economy of your country or your region uh, as compared to the rest of uh, the continent. For this particular case, Nigeria is one of the largest uh, economies in Africa. And then it looks at how uh, that economy has been growing sector by, I mean, the, uh, quarter by quarter and the reasons behind that growth. Thank you.